morning, everyone. It's my great honor to gain a reward of Paris Sacre Jean Albert grant for young researchers. It provides me the opportunity to work in journal scope with so many talented people for six months. So today's topic is how to synthesize chinoamines with enzymes from marine microorganisms. Firstly, uh, I would like to give you a brief introduction about Xiamen, Xiamen University and myself. And then we will focus on amine dehydrogenase project. Why we study amine dehydrogenase? Why we want to find amine dehydrogenase from marine microorganisms? And then is how we do it. After that, it's results and conclusions also further study. So, Xiamen University is a seaside university located in the southeast of China. It was regarded as the most suitable city for living in China <laughs> due to its uh, mild temperature, there are flowers flashing every season, and also there has a lot of delicious uh, seafood. So, it was the most popular <coughs> tourist city in China. And there is a world cultural heritage called Gulanyu Island in Xiamen City. So this small island is the China's major gateway for early stage of globalization. They has a lot of uh, mid-styles agriculture. And then is Xiamen University. Xiamen University is the leading university on the National 211 project and also in 985 project in China. So this is an, uh, this is an overview of Xiamen University. We can see it just located uh, on the seaside. That's why, we uh, that's why I study marine bacteria. And Xiamen University also has the most beautiful campus of China. So it was founded in 1921, nearly 100 years old, and has about 40,000 students. So it contains six academic diversions, 70, uh, 27 schools and colleges with 16, uh, seven, six, 76 department, so it was a quite big comprehensive university. So also in this year, April, Tala boat ship visit uh, Xiamen City, and this is Tala boat ship, and this is Jia Geng Hao, the scientific research seat, uh, scientific research ship of Xiamen <laughs> University. So uh, we found established the pa uh, partnership with Xiamen University for scientific cooperation. And then it's my self-instruction. I hold my PhD degree in biochemical engineering uh, from Zhejiang University, which is one of the top five universities in China. And I also had postdoc experience in medical biotechnology at MIT. And I have been supported as a we I have been supported by DAAD as a visiting scholar in Germany. Now I am associate professor in biochemical engineering in Xiamen University. So my research directions has been in biocatalysis and biotransformation. So first is marine biotechnology about explanation of novel enzymes from marine extremophile. And then it's in which synthetic biology based on control assembly of multi enzyme systems for biosynthesis. Also do some research about biosensor based on enzyme electrode and biorefinery biotransformation. Now we can to our project. I mean from marine microorganism. So mar uh, marine covers 70% in our planet. So for thousands of years, marine provide human being a lot of food. Nowadays, with the development of, uh, with the development of biotechnology, 
uh, so many molecules, biology, biochemistry, <coughs> bioinformatics, and also genome mix. We can explore marine for more product. Uh, some are drugs, which are novel drugs, uh, anti-tumors, anti-bacterials, or anti-virus, and also energies about biofuel. And uh, we focus on one bioproduct, value-add product, enzymes from marine ecosystem. So although we cannot see uh, microorganisms without the help of equipment. There are uh, indeed has 20,000 uh, 20, kinds of microorganisms in just one liter sea waters. And the number of bacteria species in the ocean can be up to five to 10 million. So for those marine bacteria, uh, they hitted in very special or even extreme environments, which are quite different from them. So we can see here, it, it was uh, dark and high pressures, or some very uh, hot, uh, high temperatures here, or even high salt concentrations. So microorganisms, they adjust their enzymes and metabolic pathway to those diverse, harsh environment through millions of years of evolution. So due to this biodiversity in marine ecosystem, marine enzymes they may use unique catalysis which are quite different from those, uh, from, those from tertiary source. So they may have no activity or selectivity that they were reported from the land. Or they may have some very robust, extremely enzymes. So all those <coughs> bio, uh, marine biosources, bioresources can be used to find new bioactive molecules. Also this robust biocatalyst those marine microorganisms, marine enzymes can be used to uh, upgrade bioindustrial. So although there are a lot of studies about marine hydrates, many lipids, cellulose, proteins, uh, there are only few studies about marine oxyreductase. So I pay much attention to marine oxyreductase. You can imagine those microorganisms was in the sea floor, which is dark, cold, uh, no oxygen, uh, no much nutrition. So they have quite unique uh, systems for oxyreductase to produce the energy to uh, survivors. So for those oxyreductase, they may be quite useful for makeup, uh, for produce novel pharmaceuticals, for some fine chemicals, and also can be used for biosensor. So uh, with the high throughput screen storage and also ocean genomic, we can find some promising candidates of marine oxyreductase. And then by identifying its <coughs> structures and figure out its function by dynamic simulation, we can explanation microbial source into uh, industrial application for biosynthesis of kinol pharmaceuticals, uh, for biosensors, biodiagnosis uh, to benefit human beings healthy. So uh, not only those lower enzymes with new activity, I also pay attention to robust extreme enzymes from marine microorganisms. Those who can stand very high salt concentrations, stand high pressures, high temperatures. So I have special interest in host tolerance amino acid dehydrogenase, which can be used uh, in non aqueous biocatalysis system to uh, catalyst those substrate which cannot solve in water. 
So by studying uh, the mechanisms of host tolerance amino acid dehydrogenase, uh, we want to know what is the driving force for the conformational change to salt concentrations. So using the storage of studying uh, amino acid international network of those enzymes and also how energy is transferred uh, among uh, network to drive the conform conformational change. So uh, some amino acid dehydrogenase has been studied. And then we came to amine dehydrogenase. So there are so many uh, new enzymes from marine, they can be uh, explored. Why we study kinoamine dehydrogenase? Why we study amine dehydrogenase? So kinoamine are key building block for drunk. There is a Chinese saying, Wu Dan Bu Chen Yao. That means for almost all pharmaceuticals, they contain the amine group. So there are two traditional biosynthesis routines of kinoamine. The first one is kinetics revolutions by lipase. So the limitation of these routines is that the sericoid is only 15%. Another one is also widely used is catalysis by transaminase. It has quite high selectivity, <coughs> but it used organic amine as an amino group donor and it involved a lot of enzymes to do the cofactor recycling. Also, they has problems of kinetics balance and substrate inhibition. Then, NADPH dependent amino dehydrogenase, it can catalyze reductive emulation of ketone into kinoamines. So, contrast to lipase and transaminase. Amine dehydrogenase has several advantages. One is it has uh, it takes high endothelial selectivity, and it can use amino as an ammonia as an amine source, which <coughs> is much cheaper than uh, organic amine, and then it is easy to for the cofactor generations. So, amine dehydrogenase. It's an ideal routine for biosynthesis of kinoamine. But there are only a few why amine dehydrogenase has been reported. Most of the amine dehydrogenase is from protein engineered amino acid dehydrogenase and amine dehydrogenase. And then that's our ideas. Why we just to uh, find white type amine dehydrogenase from marine biodiversity. So uh, in Xiamen University, we use the biochemical approach. And in here, we use genomic approach. So we cooperate with each other to find amine dehydrogenase candidate from marine microorganism. Uh, we face a big challenge how to find white type amine dehydrogenase with high steel uh, selectivity. There are millions of uh, marine microorganisms. So in each microorganism, there are thousands of enzymes. So the step first, uh, step one, we do the screening of marine microorganisms and from different uh, resources, some even from the oyster. So we divide some active strains and then uh, use the genome sequence and competitive genome sequence and competitive genome analysis, we can get some uh, candidate gene. And in China, we use enzyme separation and purification from white type strain, also get some candidate. Combine these two methods, we get uh, Amino dehyd amine dehydrogenase candidate, and then we use bioinformatic tools to identify its structure and function, also express it, purify it, and do the experimental validation of its activity. So for step one, 
Uh, one year, 100 marine bacteria has been screened and we got eight active strains. For two of the most active strains, uh, the activity was maintained after 50 round metabolic evolution. So, uh, we do the genome sequence based on nanopore rate and immune rate. And two active strain was sequence, and two negative strain also was sequence. And now we carry out competitive genome analysis. Firstly, we select negative strains with closed genome uh, as a reference. So it was here, negative strain with reference. And then we select all genes without homology in this reference genome. So this is the red one. That means the, uh, the homology is less than 18%. From this candidate, from this candidate, we use the we to uh, we are going to select the sequence coding for enzymes, which requires NADP as an NADPH as a cofactor. So we use NADP binding domain superfamily, which contains a lot of uh, subfamilies to make sure we won't miss any promising candidate. And for this strain B29, uh, we defined a relative strain DSM6, uh, 60A3 as a um, reference. So uh, first step, we get more than 600 candidates, and then we use NADP binding domain to narrow down it into 18 candidates. For another active strain, 524, we also get a commercial, uh, commercially available and uh, just a sequence negative strain as a um, uh, reference. So this negative strain means that we put this strain, uh, we cultivate this strain with amine as an inducer, and then we test its activities of amylation and deamylation. If they don't have activities on both sides of reactions, so it was a negative strain. And also, uh, we can narrow down the candidate uh, six candidates from more than 800 candidates. And then at the same time, in China, uh, we do enzyme separation and purification. Firstly, the strain was cultivated uh, with amine as inducer, and then we do the protein separation and purification. And also, target gene was found by the proper technology, which was quite similar to candidate 0059. And um, also bioinformatic identification was carried out. So for 0059, we, uh, we do the homology modeling by ITASA and refined it by mod refiner. Also do a lot of blast and structural compressions. But they didn't, uh, there are uh, not too much detailed results to tell me what is this enzymes. And then we express it in E. coli and do the purification. And verified it activity in both the emulation and emulation. For the emulation, now is something quite interesting. Even without the amine as a substrate, there was quite high activities. So when we added the amine, it uh, decreased the activity. So amine maybe is an inhibitors of these enzymes, or maybe it was a competitive substrate uh, with these enzymes, but we don't know what is the other substrate. And then when we do the emulation, uh, for the six test candidates, there was no activity. And we have studied uh, amine dehydrogenase in the networks of DNA by genomic. 
we try to study it on the levels of RNA by trans, uh, transcription modic. So with the help of metabolic evolution, that means we do the several rounds of metabolic evolution with inducers and then uh, do the RNA extractions and subsequence compared it with white type strain. So it may illuminate some genes which involved in amine metabolic uh, pathways, including amine dehydrogenate. And then we con uh, came to the conclusion. So uh, first strain has been sequenced. And we fight 24 candidate genes <coughs> by competitive genome analysis and also has been expressed and purified. Uh, we experimental validations of six candidate gene, but no uh, amino acid uh, amine dehydrogenase activity is <coughs> showed. And now we find a good candidate for cofactor recycling in multi and zone systems, uh, although we don't even know what is the uh, exactly information of this enzyme. So for further studies, uh, firstly, we want to identification of the 0059. Uh, is it a multifunctional enzyme or is it enzyme without the amine dehydrogenase activity? And now we will uh, finish the experiment validation of more gene candidates because we got 24. We only test the six gene. And then metabolic revolution and transcriptional analysis will, uh, will be carried out. Also, we uh, have applied for, applied for joint research project of CNRS and mm. NSFC uh, with the title of General Mining of Host Tolerance Amino Acid Dehydrogenase and Molecular Modification. Uh, publications about marine microorganism genome sequence and AMDH genome mining will be prepared. And I want to thank you for the financial support of Perry Sakri John Edward Grant for young researchers. Uh, also, the National Natural Science Foundation of China. For the first one, is about amine dehydrogenase. Uh, I got it about five years ago. And the second one is about amine, amino acid dehydrogenase from marine microorganisms. And I want to thank you on the courage in Genoscope, Karen and, and Masai for holding me here. And people who do the DNA preparation, sequence uh, assembly, they wait for competitive uh, genome an genomic analysis, also Genoway and other peoples for gene cloning and enzyme preparations, and those people who do the enzyme productions, vertical for uh, metabolic evolution. Also the students in Genoscope, Thomas, uh, Sophia Croy, uh, so thank you for all your help. And I also want to thank you the students in Xiamen University, uh, Leng Hong, Zhang Yonghui, Lin Peng, Huo Hehu, Yao Guanxiao. And those students uh, in the Nero Biocad teams, which won the Golden Prize of Biomolecular Design Competitions. OK, thank you for attention, and welcome to Xiamen University. <laughs> So when you, when you do the genome mining, do you remove you remove all the genes that don't have so you, you remove the genes that don't have any homology in the negative strain or you remove the genes for which there is individually less than eighty percent of homology? Uh, it was individually less than uh, we select those genes which is in the active strain, not in the negative strain, and they have the uh, homogeneous less than 18%, less than 18%, not all the gene. Okay. And would that not exclude, like, say you could have a one pseudo gene that's just inactive just because of one mutation or something like that? Do you not risk excluding those genes? No, no genes? Like, you could have a gene that would be active, it had just one base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right?
Yeah. I mean, would you not lose those? Um, would you not lose those genes too? Uh, those, uh, those genes who may also has activities, even if it's homogeneous, is less than eighteen percent. Do you mean that? No, the ones that have ninety percent or ninety-eight percent homology, but is just inactive because it has one point mutation that killed it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we did not study that. That's why we also need, need bioinformatic identification after we do the gene, uh, select gene candidate. All right. Can I just add one thing? Uh, uh, in the second strategy we are just uh, doing now, we just select with the NADPH domain and don't use the reference genome. So okay. then we will not miss the type. Okay. Okay. Because we don't find it in this way. So now we, we do the second strategy, mm -hmm. but there is more gene to test, so we choose yeah. that at a second time. I'm not sure that I have understood everything, but you, you, you got, after the comparative genomics, you got six candidate genes. So you, you, you did some experiments on, the, on this gene just to see whether they have the good activity or not. Yeah. And, uh, and um, to, to get this six gene, you, you reduce the number of genes by using um, uh, domains uh, for NADPH and, and things like that. Do you think that it could be better to, to relax the, the selection, to, to get more gene, and to test more gene to, to get uh, I mean, the other activity? Uh, yeah, of course, we need to do uh, another selections to find the uh, candidate genes, not only dependent on uh, NADPH binding domains, maybe they have some, some other characters during uh, sequence, during code. But because there are so less, uh, so less why amine dehydrogenase, they don't even know during report about why amine dehydrogenase, so there is no, no gene code for us to, to gain a reference. So maybe we can narrow, uh, find some other, other methods to do the selection.